the first point that Silva Thu talked about is what is a mother's love. And I'm going to talk about how to honor a mother's love. Well, we hear about the, the sacrifice, the love, the unconditional love that our mom has given to us. Then you know, how are we going to honor that? You know, there's some principles and applications that I want us to look into. And Kisuva do provide some biblical principles as you look at the story. There are a couple of powerful illustrations that we just saw. And these powerful illustrations depict uh, the love of a mother. It shows the sacrifice of that. And we celebrate Mother's Day because of her tremendous and uncond unconditional love that she has for us. Uh, many of us receive this love in one form or another. And as you know, either by her verbal affirmation, saying that my son, my daughter, I love you. Well, either by just a, you know, simply a, a physical hug, a holding our hand, assurance that she comforts us, that she's there for us, and for that physical attention. Or through the fact of just birthing us into this world, giving birth to us, that's already the love uh, that she has for us. And we have no doubt how much our mothers love us. There's no question. Everybody knows how much their uh, mother loved them. You know, I know that um, it's, for some of us, it's hard for us to understand that. But you look at it, and you will see a mother's love, usually if you're married, you know, through how much your wife loves your children. You know, I you know, don't really see how much my mom loves me because I was still a child. Right? I was still a baby. I was still, uh, I don't remember much of the things because, you know, uh, how, how much my mom loves me. But when we have our children and I watch my wife as she care, as she love, as she feed, as she tend to my children, I just imagine myself as one of my children and my mom, how she would stay up all night and the husband or me snore through the night. How she would always think about her children. Even right now, my son is 25 years old. I mean, no one should be taking care of him. He's strong. He's in the Marines. But yet my wife constantly thinking about him. Oh, I wonder what he's doing. Just leave him alone. She's still thinking about her children. My daughter's going to have a granddaughter. And she's like, you need to call people. We can get your chicken from Minnesota. I said, it's okay. We'll just go and get it from the store. She said, no. And I watch her, how much she loves our children, constantly thinking about them. And I wonder, that's how much my mom loves me. Even though I don't see it, even though I don't hear it, but through my wife's example, I get to see that. I get to receive those blessings, that how much my mom loves me. And the same thing for you guys. If you don't know how much your moms love you, just watch a newborn child as she, he or she's been loved by her mother. That's how much your mom loves you. But yet the question for today's message is, how are we as children going to honor a mother's love? I know many of you know how to honor your mom's love. But for so many, we uh, never get that chance. We never have that opportunity. But yet, the world, yet, you know, our parents, yet, even God expect each and every one of us to honor our mom, to honor our mother. That is why in the fifth commandment, in the you know, ten commandments, God said in Exodus 20, towards it, God commands for you to honor your father and your mother. Because honoring, it is a learned behavior. It is not a... Um, um, it's not an innate behavior, but it's a learned behavior. And it's just about every human behavior is operated best from the learned behavior. Because learned behavior is based on what you learn, what you experience, and what you go through. And you're able to adapt that and to know how to do that. Well, God said that he commanded us. It's a direct commandment saying that we are to honor our parents, your mother and your father. But yeah, we don't know how to do that because we haven't learned about that. No one really you know, walk us through the concept and the process and the steps. This is how you ought to honor your mom. 
in this kind of ways. And so today I'm just going to be sharing some principles, some you know, concepts of how to honor a mother's love based on some biblical principles you know, that's in here. So how are we as children going to honor a mother's love? There are five ways you know, that we can start you know, to apply in our life you know, to honor our mother's love. And um, I know that you know, it's hard for us to understand, so I'm going to make it as simple as possible. And so I'm just going to use the word honor and use the acronym from each of those letters to show us, to give us, you know, to honor our mother's love. And so the word is honor, right? And so we're going to use H-O-N-O-R. And so to understand that, we have to know what that word means. You know, the word honor, you know, basically, there's a lot of definitions that you can learn from that, but we want to look at the biblical definition. Because in the Bible, I mean, God said, honor your mother and your father. You know, honor your God. It's a lot of word honors being used in there. So in the Bible, when it talks about honor, it talks about esteem or value or, or great respect. And so it's a noun form that's been used in the Bible, is to honor someone, is to value him or her highly, or bestow value upon him or on her. And so you put that person above you, above your needs. And the Bible exhorts us to expose or express honor and esteem towards certain people. If you read the Bible, it talks about you need to honor are your parents. You need to honor those who are elderly or who's of age. And now, most important, you need to honor those in authority and who's over you, and then you need to honor God. But we must understand that all authority and honor belongs to God, he and himself. If we can honor certain people who's in authority over us, then we can honor God. And that's why it's so important that the simplest thing for us to practice is the people who live with us, the people that we work among with, the people that we are under, if we should be able to have that learned behavior, that experience, and to learn from it, to honor that person, then we can definitely honor God, the one that we can't see, the one that we can't hear. But yet, if we can honor those who are closest to us, then honoring God should not be an issue. It should be you know, something that we can learn and to help us, to guide us, and you know, to live. So, the first letter is H. Honor, and we can start with honor, right? The H is for honor your mother. Yeah, you need to honor your mother. And yeah, to honor your mother means what? To show her respect. To show her respect, you don't have to agree with your mother about you know, a lot of things, but you have to honor her. You have to respect her. You, know, you might not agree that the closer you are, your mom is going to approve it, but yet you need to respect her and to honor her instruction, to honor her. You don't have to believe what your mother believes, yeah, but you have to honor her. You have to respect her. You don't have to like what she likes, yeah, but yet you have to honor her, and you have to respect her. To give honor or show respect to your mom means you treat her with dignity, with decency, with respect, with dignity. The first step of showing respect is how you talk to her. Yeah. If the way I watch you and your mom, the way you talk, I know for a fact you honor her, respect her, or not. The way how she called upon you, me too. Achima! I know that you don't respect her. Means I mean, or in or like your face, and you don't even respond at all with no comment, with silence. If your mom come and tell you that, hey, can I ask you to do this, and then you don't even pay attention at all, we know that you do not honor your mom. By the way how you respond, by the way how you talk, by the way how you, uh, you know, talk to your mom. I do a lot of uh, translation, and I would go to court you know, in front of the judge and the panel and the jury, and sometimes we do at a, a disposition, um, which is a couple of lawyers and the uh, transcribers and all of that. But yet most of the time when I'm in court, everybody respect the judge. And you respect the judge by, yes, your honor, no, your honor, or yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. 
You never call the judge by the name. You have to look at the judge. You can't even talk. You have to wait until the judge tell you what it is. Either you're guilty, not guilty, or no or contender, right? You guys know those three words. That means you got a ticket once in your life that you have to go sit in there. Well, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no or contender? Nobody knows what no or contender is. But anyway, you go to court, you know what that is. And so you stand up there and they say, well, how do you plead? Guilty, your honor, or not guilty, your honor, or no or contender, your honor. You always dress by your words to speak to it. If you uh, have a tone of voice that is, is angry or a tone of voice you know, that is kind of like rebellious, they will remove you. They will you know, hold you in contempt of the court. That means that you, you violate, you're going to pay fines or even you know, charge, you know, put you into prison. And so I look at that and say, wow, to honor someone, that's how you talk to them. But yet yeah, I look at many of us, the way how we talk to our mom, that there's no respect. There's no dignity. And we talk to them like they are dumb. We talk to them like they don't even exist. We ignore them. The first thing about honor your mother is that you have to show her respect, dignity. The word of God says this. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to what? To death. I read, I'm like, wait a minute. So if I talk bad about my mom, I talk bad about my father, I am to be put to death. I should not even curse my parents. But yet, I've seen over and over again that we as spoiled children, sometimes we will yell at our mom, we will spit at our mom, we will ignore our mom and treat them with curse. And we will curse our parents with the F word, S word, the T word, whatever the letter it is. And then we would do that. And the word of God in Exodus 21, 17, in Matthew 15, 4, in Mark 7, verse 10, said that anyone, that means you and I, it doesn't matter you're old or you're young, anyone who curses their father or mother is put to what? To death. And he continues it because they have cursed their father or mother. Their blood will be on their own head. (laughs) Just almost like that. Yeah, that flamingo, the blood's dripping, right? That their blood will be on their head. That means that they are responsible for that. And it continue on in Proverbs 20, 20, it says, whoever curses his father or mother, his lamp will be extinguished in deepest darkness. If you curse at your parents, that you seem like there's no hope in the future at all. There's darkness in you. That there's no light. Curse is he who dishonored his father or mother. And let all the people say, Amen. So if you dishonor, you disrespect your parent, all of them are going to say, Amen. Curse is on you. You receive that curse. You think you're cursing your parent? You receive that curse upon yourself. Amen. Let it be like that to you. That you receive those. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 16. And children are to obey the parents. But honor or respect is more important than just obedience. It's possible to obey without showing respect. You can do as you're told and still rebellious at your heart. But God called us that we are to respect, we are to honor, we are to show dignity in the way how we talk, the way we act, the way how we treat our mom. Look at your life. How many times do you treat your mom with dishonoring, curse at your mom? Your mom said, me tired, you have to use yourself by. Get your body to you. Good move, good one. Your mom said, you have to just stay here. And you're like totally rebellious. Or well, your mom said, me too. Get your son to a path on. You play, you have to go to a path on. You don't know my friend. Get your body to a point you. But you need to respect to honor your mom. Why? 
because we tend to honor people that we don't know that much. Your mom gave birth to you. She knows you. We tend to honor people who we think deserve it or we think that they earn it. People like, well, we honor great athletes. You know, people who you know, are, are gifted, we honor them. We honor successful politicians. You know, we, you know, when, we, when, for example, the governor come here, we're like, oh, oh. I mean, we bow our head and we train them in honor. But our, man, our mom who gave birth to us stand here, we don't even look at her. We honor not only successful politicians, but we honor successful people who are wealthy and smart. Oh, it's such an honor to meet you. But yet, the one who gave birth to us, we don't show any honor at all. We don't respect at all. Today, how do you honor your mom? If you have been talking bad about your mom, if you have been talking down on your mom, you have yelled at your mom this morning, is she telling you to go to church? You need to go and call and apologize to your mom. You have one day to do it. That's good, right? Today's the day. To ask for forgiveness. Say, Mom, I'm sorry that I, I yell at you. I'm sorry that I didn't do this thing. I'm sorry. I respect you. I honor you. I love you. Show some respect to your mom by honoring her. The O in honor is obey. Obey your mother's instructions unless it violates God's word. Now, what I can tell you here. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right in Ephesians 6.1. You are to obey your parents, including your mom, because this is the right thing. This is the right thing. Children are to obey their mother. We are our children here. Every one of us is a child, including your mom. Yet we need to be able to obey our mother's instructions unless it violates God's word, unless it is illegal. But, you know, I was going to say because it's illegal, we still have people, illegal moms who, mom who want to do illegal things, still tell children, the children who love illegal stuff, still do it anyway. But, you know, as long as you violate God's word, we should not obey her instruction. But if it doesn't violate the word of God, we are to obey her instruction. Colossians 3.20 says, instruct us to obey our parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. you obeying your parents is not only for them, but it's also for God, that it pleases God to see that we obey our mom. And the you know, Proverbs, it says that a wise son Heeds his father's instructions or his parents' instructions, but a marker does not respond to rebuke. Now, we need to be obedient to the word of God, to our parents. Each of you must respect your mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. This is God talking directly to your children. This is God talking directly to you, that you must respect you must honor, you must obey your father and your father, and you must observe my, his Sabbath because he is the Lord. God designs for his children to learn to obey, to honor their mom as they grow up so that they can live wisely, so that they can learn from the experience Again, it's that learned behavior. If they can learn from their, you know, their mom the things that she did wrong or the things that she did right. Even Jesus you know, is obedient to his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, as he was growing. And so that as he are uh, obedient to that, in the result that he, he gained all this great wisdom in his life. The Bible says that children who are not disciplined, right, that who do not obey their parents are much worse off in life. And we can see that. It is so true. That's why the word of God tells us that we need to be, have obedience on that. The N, 
is never stop praying for your mother. Yeah, never stop that. I've been a pastor for 15 years, and you know, I hardly heard any mom you know, tells me that, oh man, my children pray for me all the time. I only hear from the children. My mom prayed for me all the time. Why are we doing the same to our mom? Now we should be able to pray for our mom. And as I hear these stories from all these children, and they say, they, they, you know, I graduate because I graduate from college, I graduate from high school because my mom never stopped praying for me. And I say, you know, I, I have a good job here because my mom never stopped praying for me. I have a wife today, I have a husband today because my mom never stopped praying for me. I am healed from my sickness. I am healed from my circumstance or my worries. All of these because my mom never stopped praying for me. Well, children, when was the last time that you prayed for your mom? When was the last time you actually sat down with your mom and said, Mom, I'm going to pray with you? Just don't pray for her because you pray for her. She don't know. I don't know. But if you pray with her, she knows your heart as you pray together. When was the last time you said, hey, mom, before you go somewhere, let's, let's pray. Let me pray for you. It's always the mom said, before you go, it's always the mom telling the children that she's going to pray for them. Well, come here, let me pray. Very few I see the children will grab their mom and say, mom, I want to pray for you. I'm going to go work today, but I'm going to pray for you, mom. I said, Mom, last night I woke up in the middle of the night and I was thinking about you and I was praying for you. When was the last time you do that? Not only that because you don't have any worries in your life. You don't need to worry about your mom. You need to be praying for her and you need to be praying with her. Ask yourself right now, when was the last time you pray? When was the last time you pray with your mom without her telling you? Without her doing it, you have to be that intent. And Isaiah you know, 40, 29 said that you know, he gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases the strength. Your mom is frail, weak, older now. Might forget a certain things and, and, and don't remember certain things. You ought to be praying for it. That's why Isaiah said, God gives the power. Wouldn't you like to pray that she received the power when she's faint, she doesn't see it well, she doesn't um, know certain things. Not only that, but as you look at you know, 1 Peter 5, 7, say that casting all our anxiety on him because he cares for you. God cares for your mom. And for you to be able to cast all the worries, all the anxiety to God, even your mom, so that she knows. She knows about it, but it would be nice if she hear from you, that you know about it too, that you care about her. Never stop praying for your mom. Another Bible verse, that she needs comfort. It said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comforts who comfort us in our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yes, you are there with your mom. You are there providing a house for her to live. You take care of some of her bills and stuff. You provide food on the table for her to eat. But it will be great for her to know that you know that God is her comforter, that God is your comforter. You need to be able to pray a, a prayer of comfort to your mom. When's the last time you pray to comfort your mom? When's the last time you pray for hope for your mom? When's the last time you pray for counseling for her to cast all her anxiety you know, to, her, you know, to, to God? Today might be the day if you have not. The old, ongoing support you know, for your mother. 
This is what you ought to do. Is that, you know, one thing I found out that you know, we need to support our mom until she is no longer alive. That she's no longer living. We need to support her spiritually, emotionally, financially, and physically. And these are very important because it is the aspect that she is weakening in this area. We need to be praying for her spiritually with intention, with intentionality, and intentionally call and ask for her. Mom, I'm going to pray for you. Is there anything that you want me to pray for you? Mom, I'm reading the Bible on this verse, and I was thinking about you. Mom, did you understand? And she should be able to talk to you about the Word of God. If she can't read, some mothers, they can't even read the Bible because the eyes is bad and the glasses and, and the Hmong language is so hard for them to read. How would it be great if you just spend some time saying, Mom, sit down here, I'm going to read the Word of God with you. And you're playing games and you're doing all the other things and watching all these things while your mom trying to read the word of God. How nice if and have your intellect, all the school and the prayer she's praying for you to sit down with her and say, hey mom, let's read the word, the, the word of God together today. And if you don't understand it, let me see if we can, I can help her to understand what the word of God is saying. You need to support her spiritually. You need to support her emotionally. By, by, taking, um, to, by talking to her, that's the most important thing. Emotional support is by able to communicate, knowing that you are there, that you care to help her to understand certain things that she needs help on. So many times I see mothers um, that they call me as a pastor. And they say, I need this. I'm like, wait, you have sons and daughters who's at high education. Why are you? I'm not that I don't want to help, but I ask the question, where do all your children go? Why? Because you can't even communicate, have a good relationship with your mom. Something they feel that maybe they come to you and let, let you power, let you go up and look at it. Tell us, tell us. Or you don't even, you ignore it. You don't even care about it. They're emotional. And they say, I need someone to help me. And they come, and I, it's not that I don't help them. I think I should have said, can you go back to your children first and come back? Because they already gone so many times. And I see this, and I'm like, my heart just breaks because to see that how we do not sometimes support this ongoing support emotionally for our mom. Physically, we need to support the, uh, our moms because by taking care of her, her medication, her doctor visit, assisting her when she is getting older, uh, she can lift anything up. You help her to lift it up. I see young men go and open the door for their girlfriend. I said, what? But their mom, just show them up. Come on, mom, let's go. And she come and she, she came and open. It doesn't, you know, this carpet button, she came and open to get in there. But yet, the, your girlfriend, she can jump in the car, you know? And yet, you still have to go open the door. But your mom, she go to the store and we're moms, so we always buy, I don't know why you have to buy these big rice bags, right? And I see moms carry these rice bags into the house in the garage. And the son just walk in. Well, the daughter just don't, it just ignore it. I'm like, hello? Listen, you got her, you know? Who gave birth to you? Your mom's right there. She, she's like dragging. I'm like, man, you're not going to kick us all, right? I'm probably going to kick this person, man. Your mom is struggling there. And, and you, know, you, you help her physically. And you help her financially. I understand your mom have her social security, she has her retirement, or whatever it is, or she has her own job. But wouldn't it be nice for you just to take her out to, you know, to certain events, to certain things she'd like to, to even help pay for some of her bills? Or to balance her checkbook? Or to take care of some of her financial obligation? I mean, yeah, maybe your mom probably make more money than you do. But yeah, it's okay. You still have to say, hey, mom. I'm going to treat you here. Mom, I'm going to you know, spend some time with you here. You know, you, we need to have this ongoing support for your mom. This ongoing support for your mother reveals that you appreciate her. It reveals that you respect her. It reveals that you honor her. And you look at here, and it's Proverbs 23, 22, says, When your mother is old, 
show her your appreciation. When she's getting old, you need to appreciate her. You need to be there to support her. First Timothy 5, 3, 4, it kind of summarizes that. It tells us that it is the children's responsibility, not the government, not the father, but it's the children's responsibility to provide care for their aging parents. That means that you and I, we have to provide care for them. We have to take care of them. And that is pleasing to God. Not other people might call, whoa, get me, don't kill God yet. No. So that bunch you have to don't change more. So that God can be pleased. Let's go down to the last letter, R. Remember your mother. So I'm like, of course I know my mother. Do you remember your mother? Today when you come to church, do you remember your mother? What about 363 days out of the year? Because their birthday and Mother's Day. Do you remember your mother? You are to remember your mother only when they are alive or even when they pass away, that they're no longer with you. You need to remember your mother, and remember means you need to include them in your life. You need to celebrate them in, in many things that you do. As we get older and our life gets busier with jobs, with children, and with, with other responsibilities, we tend to overlook our mom. Our dad's there, but we tend to overlook our mom. But today we should remember our mothers and celebrate with them. Single moms especially are the loneliest, isolated, and culturally irrelevant in our community. You need to be able to remember them. Their mom, even dad's not here, was still here. You need to remember them. You need to judge her name near her. Swallow she her. She and judge her to near your name, your sister, near to sell it, near to judge her near to she. Especially John near, where you are in the Timothy. Then they are John, call she at here. You need to love them. Remember their birthdays, their anniversaries, their holidays, and, and other times just, just, just to say, hey, hello, mom, how are you doing? Even our mother who lives with us in the same house, we still don't talk to them. Everybody do their own thing. Well, be nice to say, hey, yeah. If you, you ask them, I guarantee you that you ask them, how are you doing? They will tell you every pain from their toe to their head. Even dreams that they have. Real dreams. Dreams that something you're like, oh, my goodness. They will share with you if you give them the time. And you give them the time and you remember them. See, Jesus remember each of us, our pains, our sufferings, and our loneliness, and our brokenhearted. He knows. He remembers each and every one of us. And yet we live with our mom, the mom who gave us birth. We don't even remember anymore. In John 14, 1, the word of God said, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That means that your mom, her heart's always like, you know, worry about all of these things. Remember that that's, she still has all these anxieties and all of these things of what's going on, all these isolations and worry. And Jesus said he knows that our hearts always are in trouble or our hearts always have anxiety. And we need to also think that about our mom. Remember, when God you share and remember your mom. Remember your mom. Remember your mom. Remember your mom. Because she also goes through those things. Who is she going to tell to? She can only tell to her friends so much. And her friends, oh my goodness, man. The poor guy who thought she's under the law. But you can be that person to hear her 
stress, to hear her aches, to hear her pain, to hear all the trouble that is in her heart. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. God is close to them, and God is also close to you. You need to be able to remember that so that you can always go to God and say, God, remember my mom. She just had a surgery. She just had these situations. You need to remember your mom. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will never leave, nor leave you nor forsake you. For her to know that even though sometimes you don't think of her or sometimes you're not around, that God will never leave her. God will never forsake her. Do you remember your mom? Do you still remember your mom? Do you know who your mom is? Sometimes we don't. Because we live, like, we live a life like we don't have a mother. People who know who their mom is, they always remember, always talk about her, always pray for her, and always know that everything, they eat something, they think about their mom. Oh, man, I, have, I eat a full of noodle, I'm thinking about my mom, how she always feed me. Remember your mom. John 19, 27, Jesus said, he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. In the last moment of his life, suffering, hanging on the cross, Jesus still remembered his mom. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. What about you? You're not suffering. You have every blessing that your mind has given to you, but yet you don't remember her? That is a shame. It is a shame. It's a shame that you don't honor your mom. So how do you honor your mother's love? We learn that you honor by what? By honoring her, obeying her, never stop praying for her, providing uh, ongoing support for her, and remembering her. Well, the thing is this, is that how you treat your mother not only impact her, but it also impacts you. If there's a blessing or a, a curse for, for you based on your treatment of your mother, and then God, God, what a child, God, Niana. They pretty much talk it, talk it, so they all in the talk of Niana. To honor or, or fail to honor your mother is a choice that takes you down one or two roads. That's it. And they go, you are, uh, go, you are who, go, you who did you who, God, Niana, you are more out of it, so it is a curse or a blessing. The choice is yours how you honor your mother's love that she has given to you. I told this story uh, uh, last year, but I'm going to tell it again because I think it's perfect for what I'm teaching today. It's about uh, a fairy tale by Grimm's. Grimm's and his brother write a lot of fairy tales in the 1800s. And so some of the books, uh, the fairy tale they, they wrote is like um, Hansel and Gretel, uh, The Pied Pipers, um, uh, Snow White and the Southern Doors. So they wrote those kind of fairy tale story. Uh, one in the story, they wrote about uh, the relationship from the elderly, which is the grandfather, but I'm going to use this as the grandmother, uh, the, from the, the grandmother and the son and the daughter-in-law and the grandson. And so one night they were having a dinner. And the, the grand, so the grandmother lives with them. She's old, and so she sit down and eat on the table. And, and when she pick up her food and she eat, um, it's messy, you know, because, you know, she's old, she's shivering. And so when she put it in her mouth, sometimes it mess and go down here. Well, she eat with her mouth open like this, kind of like me, <laughs> I'm not old, but so, so she eats uh, like that. And one day the daughters and say, Mom, you, you got to eat better than that. You know? If you don't, you can't be eating at the table with us because it's not 
um, etiquette, and it's not pleasant. And, and, and when you eat like this, it's like we can't eat it, you know, because it it's detestable. And we can't stand you eating on the table with us like that. And so when she continued to eat that, she can't help it because of age. And the grandson keep watching the conversation. Well, one day, um, she finally kind of like dropped the bowl. And the, the, so the, his, her son said, that, okay, enough is enough. For now, you cannot eat in the same table with us. We're going to put you at the corner with your little own table and a, for you so that you will not disgust us when you eat. And so they put her in the corner. The three of them sit on that table, and she will eat. And she keeps looking. I want to be with my family, right? And they're like, oh, my goodness. Food tastes much better when your mom's not here or, or, or grandma's not here with us. And so she keeps looking, and she eats loneliness and feels very hurt. And then suddenly she drops a bowl, and the bowl crack. And the son said, okay, enough is enough. If you're going to eat like an animal or like a pig, I'm going to build a pig's trough, you know, a trough, like a little dumbbell one, yeah, a trough for you to eat. And so they built a trough, and for her just to eat like an animal, in here like that, instead of eating with a boon in a bowl. And the grandson looked at it, and then one day they were at a park playing. The grandson saw a log, a pretty long log, and he was cutting the wood. And the mom and the father said, son, what are you doing? We got to go. Oh, I, I'm building this to be a trough. And so that when you and my old get old, then I can feed you the same as you did to grandma. And so they look at it. Oh, my goodness. We're going to be like that. So the next day, with that night they got home, they pulled the grandmother to the table and to eat with them. And that is because they don't know how to honor her love. And however they treat her, it's going to be treated back to them. What about you today? How do you honor your mother's love? The choice is yours.